All right guys, what's going on? So today's video has been one that I have been trying to film for months, but as you guys know, I'm very notorious for breaking things. Well, ironically, I fixed everything at once. And so for the one time everything works, we're gonna keep it all, not break anything, put it in one spot, and give you a nice pretty update. So today's video, thanks to the guys over at Heat Shield Products, they're putting a really cool little cars and coffee event together, open house, and uh, they were nice enough to give me their loading dock to put all my junk. So, as you can see, I got the crew cab, F100. There's a couple things to change on that. We got the four-door sedans over here. We got our Drift Vic, as well as the town car. Good old, old, and reliable. And then we got a bunch of other cars up front. We have our old, faithful shop truck, the Bull Nose. This thing's awesome. It's an old revival we did. And as well, turning around, we have the Bug. So we have a lot of cool vehicles to go over. And I think this is gonna be a really good video for a lot of you guys that are new to the channel. You can see kind of in depth, I'm gonna talk about a lot of the specs on these vehicles, how I built them, why I built them, and what I did and where I got the parts. Cause a lot of you guys have a lot of questions about these builds. I'm gonna answer them in this video. So let's get into it, should be a lot of fun. Hi, so my name is Greg Lepresti. I have uh, all the six random vehicles in the loading dock over there. And my standout for today, undoubtedly, is my good friend Christian's Mustang, because he spent, how many years has it been just in paint, buddy? Uh, like Nine. like two, two and a half. Two and a half years, and that Mustang looks fantastic. If you get a chance, go over there, check the car out. He's built it all himself, looks fantastic. And I wanted to give you this award for my standout, buddy. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. So, Thank you so much. Good? You're very welcome. All right. So we're an hour early. We have the building until 12. And then you're all getting arrested. <laughs> Somebody's calling to see if they can still show up. Oh, it's my mom. That's me. He's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Most British award. Most British award. Most British car award. Very British car award. Very British. <laughs> What, what award did you get? Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, I did. What award did you get, huh? <laughs> what award did you get, bud, huh? <laughs> it showed up. What is it? Oh, the award? I think we already got that. <laughs> I swear he edited something into that. <laughs> he will. He will. Franklin. You know what that looks like? It's, it's freaking Cool hunting. guy, Frank. Oh, yeah. Those of you guys that living under a rock, checking out my channel, that's the first time you're watching a video. This is my old, faithful, first vehicle I ever owned. This is my 1971 Ford F100. It's probably the most important vehicle I've ever owned or ever will own in my entire life. It's the reason I'm filming this video. So it started my YouTube channel back when I did the open header high school reaction. It's a lot of the reason one of you guys are here probably watching me from those videos. Or the Black Widow flyby when I grenaded the motor. So, give you a basic setup on this. We're kind of going to go from back to front to a little backwards just because of the way the cars are staged. This is a Servinator. Matt Servin makes this wing. I'll put a link down to it down below or I'll put a little website link up top. It's a cool little NASCAR style uh, wing that he did. These things are pretty cool. It's like kind of a prototype because we're doing more, I'm going to change the color on this. So this one's raw, uh, but the truck has more of a NASCAR style vibe to it. So you can see we have a 15 by 10, four inch backspace BART D window wheel on this thing. It has a 295 50 15 in the back, a 275 60 15 in the front. Uh, it's a little bit staggered. The wheel is a square set, the tire is staggered. They're Cooper Cobra front and rear. They look pretty, they suck with traction. The motor makes over 500 horsepower and it spins through third gear with this tire as a, with a 295. So if you're going for the look, perfect, beautiful. If you want to actually get traction, I wouldn't recommend them. But on the Bart D window wheel, this does not come with a yellow stripe. The Aero NASCAR wheel that's on my town car does. I hand stripe these. There's a couple tools you can get on Amazon or any sort of website. It is a pinstriping tool that grabs the edge of the wheel. And that's an eighth inch wide yellow tape that we used on a round stool. You put the wheel on the stool, you spin it, and you pull the thing around and it basically pinstripes it. That's tape, not paint. So any of you guys can do that for probably like 20 bucks. This wheel is a five on five and a half, not a five on four and a half. So getting a D window wheel with that yellow stripe is borderline impossible. So I made them like a lot of things on these cars were not available because nothing on these cars bolt on. I have to build it. So that's where I get to answer a lot of your questions. So going into the front of the interior on this thing, this has a set of 1968 
Mustang style bucket seats. So these are what would have came in a very rare Ranger or uh, Camper Special models had them. This is a factory bucket seat bracket. I bought a truck out of, I think it was very inland, like a farm town. That sat for a million years and I paid 300 bucks for the truck just because I wanted the bucket seats and reupholstered them and now we're here. So the inside of this thing, it has a Tremec five speed. It's a 3650 Tremec in it right now. I would not recommend that specific tranny if you are someone who wants to bang the crap out of the gears because they're old they're from the 90s they're a first gen tko before the tko 5 and 600 and they're strong obviously i have not broken it so if you want something that's going to last you forever it's a great option but if you want to row through the gears in jag race at a high rpm it's probably not going to shift past 6500 very well but either way uh the interior's all been redone we have a custom headliner that my friend over at ghost wraps did a million years ago and uh it's a old battle worn flag Looks really, really cool. It's kind of a one-off thing I did a million years ago. It was fun. It gave me like, you know, something that was gave my truck character along with the autometer gauges in this thing. Uh, that was something I did a million years ago. It was actually the first truck I parted out. I took these gauges out of, and these autometers are so old. The, the glass is cracking, they're older. They need to be updated. The tack kind of hangs, like all sorts of little weird quirky things like that. But overall, I, I like them a lot. It's something I've had for a million years and I like them. So overall, the interior of the truck is very, very nice. So. Walking into the front of the truck, it's probably the most important part about it. This has a 306, or I think, yeah, 306 cubic inch uh, small block Ford that I designed and built myself. So this has a stock D1 71 date coded block, as well as the original matching numbers to this truck crankshaft. I've cut it three times, it's 30 under. It's polished, it's fully reworked, rebalanced, and it has scat rods, as well as a set of Racetech custom billet pistons for this thing. We have custom engineered them with Racetech. I designed them and picked out the compression ratios and everything to spec it out with these AFR heads. There's a full engine video I'll put up on the top of the screen. You can check out the whole build list. I'm not gonna go too in depth, but this motor turned at 7,600 RPM. It made over 507 horsepower on the engine dyno. And there's a dyno video. I'll put that card up too. It's really, really entertaining. You can watch this thing spin over seven grand on the dyno and it sounds insane. This was an engine, like I said, I built on my own. I designed it. I built it right here in my shop. And if you wanna learn everything about this setup, I highly recommend diving into it because I spent a lot of time engineering an engine with a stock crankshaft to push over 500 horsepower at 7,000 plus RPM. Because a lot of people think you need a stroker. This proves that you do not. You do not need a lot of stroke in the engines to make power. You make torque that way. So it depends on what you're trying to do. But with RPM comes braking things, comes a lot of responsibilities with that. And that goes back to the McLeod setup that's in it. It has a McLeod single disc clutch in it right now that's currently slipping because I upgraded the power plant. But we do have a new from Silver Sport TKX five-speed manual to go in this thing, as well as a McLeod RXT twin disc clutch that will actually hold the power. That is my F100 on a very, very quick basic rundown. Um, it is axle flipped in the rear. We made a video series on that where we flipped the axle for a hundred bucks, put a C-notch kit in it, and we went ahead and cut a coil and a half out of the front suspension. And that is how we got this stance. That's really all it is. There's a various video series on that there's a video on every single part on this truck there is an f100 playlist you guys can check everything out on this but it's enough on this truck or this is going to be a 90 minute video it's going on the crew cab you'll notice this looks a little different so i guess meg if you can stand back just a little bit to try to get this monstrosity in a shot it's probably borderline impossible because how big it is this is now sitting on a set of 37 12 50 bfg baja ta kr2s off a trophy truck and they're sick and they're huge and it's a set of KMC full billet bead locks, real bead lock. He basically uh, did a full six inch Skyjacker style uh, lift kit on this thing and put a 37 on it with stock fender, which is a big pain to do, not easy to do. You gotta really know what you're doing, otherwise you're gonna have to hack up your fender, you know, turn and you'll buckle the whole thing and it's just a mess. So there's a whole video series coming on how we built this, but I guess long and short, you'll be able to see how exactly we dive into all the geometry and all the math on how we achieve this. And it really wasn't that expensive. We basically did this entire lift for under a thousand dollars and it reuses a lot of the factory components on the truck. So you're gonna save a lot of money. It's a cool video series, we're coming out with it. We still have to put shocks in this truck. It's actually been driven here with no front shocks. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more to this truck. This truck was bought off my buddy Solomon Lunger at Ford Era out of Tennessee, uh, Saudi Daisy collection. It was 114 Ford trucks in that collection. And this was the only bump side crew cab long bed on the property. So I'm gonna give a massive thank you to my buddy Solomon for selling me my dream truck. Just look at how amazing this looks, they match. That's what I wanted since I was a little kid, a four-door to match the short bed. Because this thing is my first truck I drove to high school, so what better thing to tow it with than a four-door version, right? So yeah, we, we basically took this thing and shipped it from the Saudi Daisy collection down to Dylan McCool's place, and I revived it with Dylan, and I drove it, I think, 300 and some miles at three in the morning, all the way up 
to Bowling Green, Kentucky for the Holly Ford Fest, which is the banner on the windshield. And I put that in the Holly booth, had this thing shipped by my good friend Travis all the way back to Phoenix, where I road tripped out, put a fuel tank in it, and then drove it all the way from Phoenix or Scottsdale all the way back to San Diego, where it lives today. So there's been a lot of work done to it and the engine through uh, due to the guys over at Holly. Massive thank you to those guys, as well as Optima and Heat Shield Products to get this thing back on the road. It did sit for over 20 years. Both of these trucks did. Full MSD ready to run setup has a Holly, I believe 600 on it, if I remember properly. It's Vortex. It's got a lot of room. So it's got purple windows. You got the old faded tint. So I guess you come on this side. Factory air conditioning, but manual steering. It's very weird. So if you look inside, it's got a very rare, I believe those are dealer installed air conditioning boxes. Those are pretty interesting. They're cool. They're different. Yeah. It's a very basic bare bones interior. I basically stripped all the garbage that was all rotted out of it. And there's not really much nice stuff in it. Little by little should get there. Sick. But yeah, so it's pretty good. We just put a bumper on it. We actually towed my F100 out to the Southwest Classic Truck Show out in Lake Havasu. But this thing, towing this thing, that was literally like I was a little kid in a candy store when I saw that set up. Yeah, six or 700 miles round trip, which still in a 50 year old truck towing the whole time, very impressive with a carburetor too. So <laughs> I was very proud of this setup for sure, either way. But, um, but it yeah. was comfy. Yeah, it wasn't bad. But uh, yeah, this truck's a ton of fun. As you can see, the 37s are not lifted in the rear right now. We still have to put a block in it and it still fits. It does not rub, but it's very, very close. It doesn't rub. In case you're wondering, you can fit a 37 on a stock lift in the back. Probably, I hope you don't have nice paint. Let's move forward into the four doors. All right, so this is my 1992 Lincoln Town Car. What's left of it? And this is a very weird car. A lot of people don't like it. And why would you put any time or money into it? It's not always about the money and what a car is worth. It's about the fun and the people that you're having with it. So this car was built by my high school. Originally, it was donated to the high school. This is a one owner grandma car with 92,000 original miles. It was a perfect, pristine vehicle. It was donated to a high schooler to drive. Basically, the auto shop teacher gave it to a kid to drive to and from work. Well, that kid wrapped it around a tree. And then the auto shop teacher takes it back, turns it into a race car. Cause what are you gonna do with a total vehicle? Scrap it? No. It had a 92,000 mile grandma car with a 4.6 in it and it was not ready to die. So this thing went out and raced for three years off road in the dirt. And this entire quarter panel was pushed in eight inches. I do have photos of that. And I went ahead and I cut that all off and I straightened it. I basically got it from my good friend Seth at a party for I think 600 bucks I bought this car for. And I had since then reworked the entire car and essentially restored it. So it was such a reliable car to where the air conditioning worked, the heater worked, the stereo worked, the power seats worked. Every single component in this car worked, including the keypad. Still works. Everything works. And that was just one of those things where you just can't let a vehicle like that die. So I fixed the metalwork on the door because I was getting ready to paint the thing because it was just so ugly to look at. And I had it parked in front of my house and somebody T-boned it and took out from the taillight all the way to where I just fixed on the quarter panel. So that was essentially the second time this car had been totaled. So this car has been totaled on paper twice. And it's still driving and it's still living and it's, and it's it still running. It is so safe too. So yeah, this car is amazing. I painted this thing. This is a paint job, not a wrap. It was painted in my buddy's backyard, outside in the dirt. This red, white, and blue base color is all paint. That was done by me. Uh, and it has a overlay graphic wrap I guess decal job done by the guys over at Revolution Auto. It was supposed to re replicate the Bill Elliott Coors Light NASCAR from the 90s on the Thunderbird. And that's what it's inspiration of. A lot of you guys have probably noticed that, including the nine on the door, which was ironically the 909. It just all goes together. So you can literally see the, yeah, that is literally the livery right there. Yeah, we found that hat. Ironically. Sick hat. Yeah. Every time I see anything Bill Elliott, I always buy it because I have the car with the livery. That's, that's what this livery is based off. Of. So yeah, and then when it got rear-ended from the back to the front, I had essentially a totaled car and nothing good to do with it. No, there was zero quarter panel at all. I peeled it off like a tin can. So what I did is I chopped off, you could barely see it. There's no body filler or anything in this car. It's all metal work. So I chopped this off and I de-skinned another, it was a Yacht Club edition, all white uh, Lincoln Town Car out of the junkyards where I got the white door cards out of this thing. And we went ahead and de-skinned it and I cut and re-skinned the entire back half because I had just done all the metal work on the Galaxy. And I'd very skilled at that point. So I decided to go ahead and do just a quick job. And one day I de-skinned and re-skinned this entire quarter panel. It looked brand new. And then I had put the two Falcon spares. These are a 31, 10, 50 on this thing. And we stuck this on the back and you can see actually all the way back here i had grafted in a two bumper setup with an old crappy polylite 34 cooler this cooler is like probably as old as me and it sucks but it's just it fits the car perfectly it's awesome we can throw stuff in here no it's great behind that is a toolkit on the left side there's a jack this thing has an 88 underneath it with a set of 456 gears in it with an eaton detroit locker it is a bulletproof disc brake rear end in it and it's kind of a sleeper so yeah this thing's super sweet so yeah kind of walking inside it is very gutted there's nothing left of it and uh it's all kind of raced out interior but you can see the the power seats are on a set of factory sliders so I can fully move these up and down wherever I want them. So if you have a tall person or a short person, they can drive this and it does have a quick release so it's easier to get in and out of. 
So, and like I said, this is a very budget-friendly car. All in, I have less than five grand in this entire car, the way that you see it right now. This has the aero wheels that I was talking oh, yeah. about. So here's a set of Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws. This is a 31, 10, 5, 15, all the way around. All six do match. And there is two full-size spares in the back. These are the five on four and a half arrows that come with the yellow stripes. So if you have a five on four and a half or four and three quarter Chevy bolt pattern, you can run these. If you're with the Ford trucks, you're probably gonna have to run a Basset. That's just the way it goes. Did a custom two bumper that me and my buddy Travis built. It's got, I think, seven or eight bends in this one bumper. We made that super flush. The town car bumper hangs about four inches lower than that. Chopped it, slipped it, did the whole thing. Made it nice and clean. Try to make it not look like a gold grandma car as much. I think it looks cool. It's fun. It's got four inch thick bump stops on the control arm. The car's been six feet in the air. The camera has been broken in half twice. This car has had a hell of a life. It's still kicking. So we're going to keep driving it to keep it enjoying it. I've had the paint job on it for about two years and it still looks perfect. And it just goes to show if you take care of something, it can last forever. This thing is ridiculously fun. You guys don't even know. Yeah. You guys are sleeping on this one. Yeah. So coming over here, this is a, a newer one that was kind of, it's just one of those classic projects that was just spiraled out of control. This is my 2008 Crown Victoria. So this is uh, what's left of a Crown Vic. Pretty much the only thing left of it is essentially the suspension of the body at this point. It has a Mustang Celine non-PI bottom end short block with PI heads. Uh, I put most of the engine together outside of the long block, essentially got the long block, reworked a lot of the stuff that wasn't correct on it, put it in the car behind a Tremec 3655 speed. Now this has a McLeod RXT twin disc clutch behind it. And it's a super nice setup. It has a Willwood pedal box in it, uh, made it to an MDL hydraulic throwout setup. And it works pretty well. We are gonna change it over to the McLeod internal slave, the internal throwout bearing, just to get a better clutch, clutch actuation on this thing. But overall, it's full as fully SCC tuned. It has a full Black Widow ex exhaust system on it that I built myself. A uh, full set of stainless headers from an SN95 Mustang that I've chopped and reworked to make fit in this car. Full set of all the American coilovers front and back, and it rides pretty good. It sounds cool, it looks cool, it's just what every Crown Vic owner would have wanted. A manual with a hydro and a roll cage. It does have a roll cage that Franklin and I built. So, it's pretty cool. Another vehicle that is on a full set of power sliders, which I don't have the control, it's on that side, but these also tilt and move forward and backwards and all sorts of cool stuff. So, yeah, it's fun. We built a chassis mounted shifter to shorten the ratio. This thing has only about two inches of throw, so it pops into gear really, really quick and easy. And a drift car, that's what you want. You want to build a bang it in and out of gear. And yeah, this thing's sick. Franklin and I built this roll cage in a couple days. I think it's all just mild steel tubing. It's inch and three quarter and inch and a half down bars. Super simple, super basic. I don't know why this car's locked with the windows down. But yeah, I can get a good look. We made 316 space plates on the floor. It's fully welded and it came out really, really good. It was one of those things that we just did for fun to just kind of challenge ourselves. And the, it fits so tight, you could put a piece of paper in between the headliner and the top of the cage. And we painted it away because it looks cool. But this is an ex-cop car. You can see the Oreo colors on the inside of the doors. And it does still have the siren box in it that does work. That still all works, and it's something to definitely get myself in trouble with. <laughs> so I don't use it very often. But yeah, this thing's a ton of fun. I guess it does have my Fox Body's wheels on it, which you probably already noticed. And uh, I do have a different set of wheels for it, but it just looks good for a daily driver. This was my designated daily driver, and I don't drive this, essentially. So yeah, super fun car. I think in the future, to make this thing something that you guys would enjoy a lot more, I think it's going to make sense if we chop the body off and put an F100 on. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. At least I think. I don't know. If you guys can find a 65 with good patina, it's not white, send it my way. So I could paint the door panel. Yeah, we want to do something fun. It's cooler. But yeah, ton of fun with that one. And uh, I guess we'll leave the best for last in this safe. So we'll yeah. go to our, our old and loyal shop truck. This is, a, this is a really special one for me. And a lot of you guys probably don't actually understand the story and why it has the license plate that it does. So this was my uncle Tony's truck. And it's a family truck that sat in front of my grandma's house for 20 years because he drove it to his, her house and the third and fourth gear in the transmission blew up. So if you guys actually watch this series of us reviving this thing, so third and fourth gear never worked when we got the car driving. We drove it around the block and we had first, second, and basically neutrals. And it was a really weird feeling because I've never driven a vehicle with a blown up transmission. Well, this, tr this truck was supposed to be my uncle's son or my cousin Alex. Alex had unfortunately died of brain cancer and he did not actually get healthy enough to essentially get his license and drive this truck. So it was one of those trucks that I don't think my uncle necessarily wanted to work on it and wanted to do stuff with it, mostly because it probably reminded him a lot of his son. And unfortunately, I, I saw an opportunity there as something to where it made me feel proud as his cousin to bring the truck and actually do something with it or something that he probably would have done. So a lot of this is sentimental to my cousin that I lost and it's what I like to remember my cousin by because I was about eight years old when he died. So I didn't get a lot of experience with him and he's a super cool 
guy and I really wish I got to experience more life with him. But the truck did have a Lopresti, which is my last name license plate on it in California. And he, it, it did not come with those plates. My uncle kept the plates like he rightfully should. And I decided to go and put it into a different state that I was legally allowed to register it in, uh, that a family member of mine, also a Lopresti lives in. And I was able to register the truck and put the correct plate back on it. So it was just, it was very proper. So I gave the truck a full mechanical restoration. And all of these vehicles, but the crew cab right now does have a full Black Widow exhaust system, full stainless built. Uh, everything in here pretty much has X pipes on it. Uh, stainless headers. This has a stainless set of headers as well. This is a five liter. And as well, we swapped in a ZF five speed. So massive shout out to my friend Adam Bond for going ahead and selling me that. It's a small block, very hard to find, small block ZF5. And it's made with a just very basic truck clutch, nothing too crazy. Fully redid the interior. Um, it has a lot of LMC truck parts, a carpenter parts, a lot of restoration parts. Uh, we do have a cool uh, new vintage USA gauge cluster we're gonna be putting this thing. And a couple other odds and ends to make this just perfect. But the red velvet interior on a full mechanical restoration. I love this truck. It looks beautiful, it's awesome. It's, it's like I said, it's a sentimental truck to me. It's quiet, it's not loud. It has three layers of insulation on the inside. It's just something I can get in and relax. It's nice to drive. And we did bring back the original paint. It is very dirty right now, but it actually does have a very nice metallic gunmetal gray paint job on it. And I like it a lot. I think it's one of those things we're gonna be r and some product like I've been hinting at. We are doing the clothing obviously, but I am a mechanical engineer at heart and that's what I went to school for. So naturally, I think we're gonna be developing product for the front bumpers on these trucks and just some aesthetic, cool functional parts for you guys to put on yours. Cause I know a lot of you guys have these things, but this being an 86, it is the only year that you can get a five liter with EFI. It didn't have a carburetor. So this is a one year only truck. You can see it says electronic fuel injection on the intake that you actually painted big. So that is a uh, one year only and it's not really anything to be bragging about. It's not that good. <laughs> so I think in the future, it'll probably get either a tall deck 351 Windsor, 410 Windsor, EFI, Holly, whatever will run on it, but it doesn't make a lot of power. It's pretty slow, but it does have a really rare set of S uh, weld Sidewinder wheels on it. They're 16.5. And they're fully polished. They were polished, they're really dirty right now, but it does run a set of 31, 10, 12, 5, 16, 5 tires. So these tires are about 400 bucks a piece. And Michael was nice enough to let me have them after he du duly swapped his truck. So thank you. Cause these things are impossible to find. But yeah, like I said, very special truck to me. And uh, makes me feel good that I brought it back from the dead. Cause this thing was very rough when we got it. So it's a workhorse, not a racehorse. That it is. We're going over to the most creative project I've ever been a part of and ever done in my entire life, the Baja Bug. This thing is cool. It's fun. It has a really, really rad creation on the front for the front to back to underneath the inside to outside. Aesthetically, it's something that you look at and no matter how many bugs you've seen, you've never seen one that looks like this. So Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah. A lot of creative freedom from Megan Rodriguez behind the camera that did the artwork on the car. And this is Pony Boy. <laughs> it's the creation that I guess we came up with on the car that suited the car the best because it's essentially an outcast. Hi. Hi. I'm Megan. I'm the artist on the bug, and I'm just gonna go over a little bit with you why it looks the way it does. Um, well, this all started because I broke it. Um, I was driving it after Craig was ripping it around, and I broke the axle on it, so we had to fix it. Like, Craig wasn't exactly sure if he wanted to or what he wanted to do with it, and I asked lightly if I could paint it and he was super duper duper down and very generously let me do the whole car so it obviously was pretty beat up when she got it and especially the hood of the car it was all white completely so we had to respray it over the whole entire thing and it had a bunch of like little blemish parts and everything else and this thing was not black all the way through it was a bunch of different shades of black and gray and poopy colors and rust and all the other fun things so coated the whole thing black left this part open because he wanted like some of like a little wear and tear still there but we kind of tried to keep like an ode to all the old school race cars that are all hand painted and whatever else where it's perfectly imperfect so pony boy was the epitome of that he in the book was a character where he kind of lived two different lives so he had the rough and tough outsider life and then he had his friends who were the socks so the socks and the greasers um and he kind of fell in between the two where he was just like really really good and he just had to kind of keep to his guns and keep doing his whole thing so how this bug started it was kind of like a piece of poop and we kind of just kept giving it some faith and giving it some hard work and here it is now it's golden and it's going to stay gold so that's pretty cool Nice. Um, the checkers along the top also just kind of like an ode to like old school race cars and everything else and I just think it looks pretty cool 
and how it tapers off to the back. On the top, the nine isn't filled in all the way. So that's like another thing that I wanted to do to kind of just like keep that bare bones kind of like skeleton style um, because it's not fully done up. It's not like the whole roll cage is brand new. It's not like all these other things are brand new. We like worked with what we had. That's like what Craig was super duper proud of. So with the racing stripe, same sort of thing. A lot of like the old school race cars have similar dials where it be a lightning bolt or just like two thick lines or multiple thick lines or whatever it may be. But yeah, just had a lot of fun playing around with all the patina spots and all the imperfections to make it that much more like amplified where it's like okay cool like it's not perfect but we can make it pretty freaking cool just like all the other trucks he has they're not necessarily like perfect paint or perfect anything else but they look really freaking cool road stay gold on the top the font style and whatever else is also kind of like an old, old traditional like american style art and also like western style too because we are in the west and this thing mobs around the wild west which is pretty freaking cool so it's like a little like Steed. A little buggy steed. A little noble a steed. What? A little noble steed. It's a little noble steed pony boy. Yeah. But yeah, I've low key had this design in my head since middle school, I think. So in New York, that's where I'm from originally, we don't have any off roading anything, and I've always been into cars, like super duper into cars. So rally cars are just something you'd see online. Off roading in the desert, you'd see it all online. So I would always be doodling all these like rally liveries or all these uh, plenty of other things. But this livery in particular is something I've actually drawn over notebooks and other things like that on a car like this. So seeing it in person is like making like my little. Megan dreams come true which is really 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 special so can't can't be more thankful for Craig and the opportunity that I get to pursue because of this and now I get to paint the helmet so oh yeah yeah I'm excited. This car has a Honda J30 A1 in it. It's out of a cord. Um, it's a very basic setup. It's all stock and it has a stock computer in it, which is definitely the car's fault right now. It has a full black auto exhaust that I kind of created myself. It has an X-pipe crammed into it. And it was essentially something where I was trying to get as much runner length as I can. Uh, Franklin and I, Meg and Christian and a couple other good friends built this entire car in 30 days or rebuilt the car. So it was already three by three and A-armed in the front. Motor was already in it, but a lot of things were not put together correctly. So we redid shock mounts, redid wiring, redid engine setup, redid the back half, redid the exhaust, the interior, and so many different things. And as well, obviously the paint job, the livery, the wing that I'd handmade, a lot of these things were made from scratch just to put all of our different creative aspects into one vehicle. So obviously Megan with the artwork, I did the creative fabrication with the wing and some of the back half stuff. Franklin with his amazing dimple dies that he loves so much all over the car. And there's just a bunch of different little odds and ends that make this car so one off and so unique. And I'm very, very proud of the creation that we did in the time frame that we did. So yes, very, very happy with this car. What's coming up for the future of this thing? We need a new computer, we need to get it tuned, we need to make it reliable, the electronics still suck. We need to make those work and make the car more reliable. And better tires. Desert. Probably get a bigger tire, but I don't want to break the trans. It does have a, a 002 bus transmission, type two bus tranny. And I know if I drop it in second gear or reverse too hard, it's gonna crack like a piece of glass, so. Now we're gonna send it. But I think we're gonna put twin turbos on it, so that might come up in the future. Yeah. So, yeah, but anyways, come back to the front of this thing. Bunch of cool companies on the board with this car. It was a bunch of fun to do. Took it out to the Mint 400. Guys over at KC Highlights were nice enough to supply the car with an amazing set of lights and daylighters and slim lights. But overall, it's just a really cool car. It's a little bit sketchy on the street, but it's a lot of fun, has a hell of a lot of character. It turns a lot of heads and it makes me happy. Feels so, like you're driving a jet ski on the street. Yeah, but now <laughs> I have to have the amazingly fun job of trying to figure out how to shuttle six cars back to my shop. It's okay. We have a lot of cool people that have made this all possible. So I wanted to thank all of you guys, not only for watching, but supporting me along on these builds and these crazy ideas and these journeys and buying the t-shirts and buying the merchandise and supporting me in any way, shape, and form you can. It allows me to keep doing this and building this, which is something that for me starting this back in 2017, I am immensely proud of the things that I've created. And this isn't even all of them, as you guys know. There's still a Galaxy, there's still a Fox Body, there's still a bunch of other cars that I do own. I still build them. So get out there and build your cars. I'm only 25 years old. I just turned 25 in March. This is only some of the creations I built. What's stopping you? So get after it, guys. I hope you guys went on to enjoy today's video. It's a good little update. Hope you guys learned a thing or two and you get some inspiration to go work on your own car because you never know what you can build if you don't start turning the wrench. So with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Catch you guys there. Hope you brought the boat. Goodbye, go kart man. Can we can we straight pipe that thing on your lift and go do burnouts with it? Yeah, of course. Alright, we're hood stacking the British mobile.